welcome to Watch Complications. I'm Brian. If you haven't subscribed, think about it. Ring the bell if you want updates. Follow me on Instagram at watch underscore complications and check out my site, watchcomplications.com. All the links are below in the description. What you're gonna find in this video is a fairly straightforward task swapping watch dials. And let me give you some context. Some time ago, if you look back through my videos, you'll see there are two videos related to the Vario Silver Empire. Vario is a microband watch company based out of Singapore, it's the same place where I get these watch t-shirts. Again, I'll put the links in the description below. I've developed a really good working relationship with Ivan, the owner of the company, and he and his wife, Judy, do an excellent job in making that thing run nicely, smoothly, and put out good products. Where this all started was I was getting a watch from Vario in for review, the Silver Empire. There are a few models and it has an exhibition case back. It's a nice little simple watch, simple three-hander, which is my favorite. Hand-wound three-hander. Got a really special one coming in soon. Can't wait to show you that. Again, simple three-hander. And the issue was that the watch arrived from the previous review were broken. They had broken it apparently. And I contacted Ivan, I was like, hey, it's broken, what do you want me to do? And he said, is there any way you could probably fix it? He knew I was into more than just watch reviewing and watch making and tinkering. And I was like, sure. So I ordered up a new movement, which is a Miyota 6T33, swapped out the movement, made a nice little video to show someone how to swap a movement out of a watch. And that's what I did on this one. And then I did the second video, which was the actual review of the Silver Empire. So that's the first part of this story. The second part is, there's a second model of the Empire series coming, Empire 2. This is in Vario's pipeline, it's some time away, but let me show you a picture of one of the models. This is one of the prototype dial mock-ups that Ivan has put out on like some Facebook groups, and I've given some feedback on it. I love the blue applied indices on the white background. I love the sort of a, it's an Art Deco, it's got the Art Deco theme of the first series, but it's got this sort of nautical sense about it. Just a beautiful looking dial. I really, I really, really like it. I really moved into consolidating my collection, but this is one I know I want to have. And I've expressed that um, repeatedly. Well, through all this communication, Ivan and I have developed a really good working relationship over time. And when it came time to buy a COVID mask, Vario was using their manufacturing pipeline for straps and other materials, textiles, to uh, make masks, COVID masks for people. And there was a blue camel pattern. Let me throw up a picture of that real quick. So it sold out really quick, really liked it. There were only a, you know, a handful of these things basically. And I was like, that's the one I've got to have. So I got it. He messaged me and said, hey, I'm going to throw a strap in the package. It's like, okay, pick any strap you want. I was like, okay, cool. You know, thanks. A really nice gesture. Didn't say a word. The package shows up. My face mask is there. The extra strap, which he threw in for free, was there. But then there was something else in the package. It said fragile. I opened it up and it's a dial. One of the nicest gestures I've had in this small watch world is a micro brand owner sends me just a dial knowing that I'm going to swap it out because it is the closest looking dial to the model that I really want with the future model and what, what a wonderful gesture. So I decided let's make a video. So what you're going to see is one of the most basic straightforward tasks swapping a dial. However, this question does come up in Facebook groups and watch forums and stuff. Someone just getting into watches like you know, how hard is it to swap a dial? Do I have to remove the hands to swap a dial? Well, yeah, because the hands are sitting on one side, the movement on the other, and the dial's between them. If you want to change the dial, you got to pop the hands off and remove the dial. There's some screws involved, and you got to have the right tools like always. So let's talk the tools and the process for a simple task, swapping a watch dial. Let's go. So here's the Vario Silver Empire. See it there, beautiful little watch. Exhibition case back, you can see the 6T33. There are two different colors of this. There's a goldish color and there's a silver color, white uh, as well. This one just happens to be the gold version. And first thing we're gonna do when you're gonna swap the dial is remove the case back. For this, you're gonna need some sort of a case tool. The obvious thing with the case back is you don't wanna slip and damage the watch in some way. So you want to make sure you're using the right ends and have it aligned correctly for the size. Take your time, don't have to rush. And that case back is going to come off. Now, before I go any further, since I'm going to be wanting to keep this thing as clean as possible, I'm going to throw some finger cuts on. I like gloves a little better because these things tend to cut off circulation a little bit more than I would like. Now, I'll just grab this. Do a couple more turns with the tool. So you get it nice and loosened up. 
go. So now that we have this open, what I want to do is release the tension on the mainspring so that it is not moving while I try to remove or replace the seconds hand. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold on to the crown. The click is right here, nice and tiny. Everything on this movement is really tiny. But anyway, whenever you turn this, let me show you. This is to wind it. You can see that the click turns to its apex point. And when I release, it locks in place so that if I turn backwards, there's a slight click, but it's not moving in any direction. And I'm going to start to act like I'm going to wind this and turn it to its apex. And then I'm going to put a little screwdriver in there and hold the click and that releases it. And now notice that mainspring is more freely unwinding and I let it stop. If you just throw that open, this stem will just start to turn and it goes zoop. You don't want to do that. Hold on to it and unwind it slowly. So again, I'm going to start to act like I'm winding it and I'm putting a little screwdriver right there. Be careful, you're close to the hairspring and I'm going to let that mainspring fully unwind. Nothing has to be forced. I'm sort of slowly holding on to it with my fingers. You can see now it's gotten to where it's low enough tension I, I can let go and it's just sort of unwinding on its own. Speed it along a little bit, but there we are about at the end. You can see it's getting slower and slower as we are at the end of life on the mainspring charge. Okay, that's the proper way to go about on this model. Now, most mechanical watches are about the same. You just got to carefully hold on to the click with it at its apex and let the crown slowly unwind. That's the key. All right, cool. All right, so that's step number one. Step number two, we got to remove the stem and the crown. Okay, see that's basically stopped now. So that second's hand's not going to be moving. The way we're going to do this is I've got one of the tips. This is the S tip, I believe, from my Bergeon 6767. It's a little pin. I don't even have it in the tool right now. It's just a tip. And I am going to, you can see, let me point it out. Right here next to three o'clock is a little press pin. You know, just push that down, pop the crown out. Now, when you do that, you want the crown to be in the time setting position. So first thing I'm going to do is pull this out to the time setting. Okay. That's most mechanical washes. That's the location you want that in before you remove it. I'm going to push that little pin down. Don't need a lot of pressure, just enough. And boom, out pops the stem and crown. Set that to the side safely. Right. Now, grab my hand removal tool here. And I'm going to just lift up on the holder a little bit. Sometimes the holder will come out with the dial and the movement. Sometimes it'll just come out around it. Just depends. I've seen this one come out both ways. There's the movement holder. Do, 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 do. Set that down. And now I'm just going to flip this over and this will all pop out. There's the gasket. And I'm going to set this down so as not to get dust in the case while I'm tinkering around here. See that second hand's moving a little bit, but that's going to stop in a second. All right, well, that's sort of finishing up its charge. You need some sort of a dial protector, okay? And this will just slide underneath the hands and protect the dial so that when I use the hand removal tools, it's not going to cause any damage to the dial, okay? So let's slide that underneath of the surface. So and it's cut just a way that it will snap underneath the hands like that. Now, when I go to use the hand removal tools, and if I get this thing close to the dial, you can see it's got a curved surface. If I get this a little bit too close, it will not be an issue with scratching, scuffing the dial. It's so easy to scratch and scruff this stuff. 
I'm just going to really quickly pop this off of here. Okay, pretty simple to do. Hand removal tool. Um, going to carefully save the hand. Okay, put it in a little parts tray. And now I'm going to pop the minute hand off. Rodico out. Every watch maker, tinker needs this. Much safer than tweezers and other things to pick up hands and whatnot. And then I am going to remove the hour hand. There goes the hand. Landed on my little pad here. There it is. Hour hands, depending on how tight they're fitted, can go flying a little bit more easier than the other two. So there we go. Put that in the parts tray. Next thing we're going to do is remove the dial from the movement. You can see that the seconds hand is now stopped completely. And there are two screws 180 degrees from each other on the side of the case. One on this side, one on the other side, 180 degrees. Just quarter turn, half turn until it releases. And here again, I'm using yellow, using the right screwdrivers for the right size of screw. Okay, so just slightly, I'll start with like a half turn, quarter turn, and see if that releases. It's usually all it takes. You can see that that has now lifted a little bit. So quarter turn, and that might need just a hair more. Release that, and that will pop off of there fine. Go to the other side. Let's see, here's the other screw. Then half turn or so, and that should release pretty easily. Again, I love the curved surfaces on these hand removal tools. I use them for all sorts of watch stuff, not just removing hands. And in this case, getting on the underneath of a dial between it and the movement. This one's a fairly tight fit on this side, but just a little easy pressure, and that will pop off. Okay, set that down. That side is off, and that side is off. And there's our dial, okay? So I'm gonna set that to the side. Got my tissue paper here. Movement out of the way. Let me show you what we've got going on here. So here's the new dial. I can show you the contrast here, All right? Between the silver and the white model. I like this a lot better. So I'm going to take this out, put that in the tissue paper, movement back into the frame. You can see how small this movement is. Pretty, pretty, pretty tiny. This is three o'clock over here. You can see, even though it's tiny, right underneath here is a keyless works. So let's get this dial. I'm going to give it a quick dusting. <laughs> Rodico on the surface here. See like one or two little pieces of fuzz or something. All right, so here we are with my dial feet locations. Make sure I'm in the right spot, three o'clock, and set the dial down on the movement. And to, again, this is why I'm using finger cots. I'm gonna put my finger here in the middle of this and spin it over very lightly. It's easier to work on it from this direction at least to show you how this works. This is what will happen if I wasn't wearing cots. Over time, if something touches it, fingerprints, oils and things, you'll get this sort of stuff. Human oils are amazing things. Bending the foot post just a hair so it fits into the movement correctly. All right, so I'm just pushing down, make sure it's nice and snug against the movement. Both sides. Again, just keep an eye on where you're pressing when you're dealing with the movement. You can just test it by trying to press up on it. it doesn't have any give really, then it's tight enough. Spin this around to the other side, same thing. Do my half slash quarter turn. 
can kind of keep track of it by noticing how much it's horizontal or vertical when you start, when you finish, and what locks it down. This was essentially a full turn from horizontal to horizontal. And on the other side, it's about the same thing. Okay, that is locked down. Almost there, home stretch. Yeah. Now we need to put the hands on it. You've seen me do this before. I'm gonna use my hand pusher tool. Which looks like this. First thing I'm gonna do is put the, the correct tip in the hand pusher for the hour hand. And then use Rodico. It's really your friend here. Pick up the hand. So, see how quick and easy that is? Use the hand tools to help release it. These are simple tubes, easy to get in there. You can see there, it sits right there. What I am gonna do is try to align this hour hand as close to 12 as possible. This is a lot more complicated of a process if you have a date. Remember the goal is that you're gonna want the hour and the minute aligned at 12. Now sometimes you'll hear a snap when you press. But a lot of times all you just need is a press. And if I want to verify that I've got it pretty secure, again, I'll use my <laughs> dial protector and kind of see how much space is there between the two. It's looking pretty good. And I will perhaps try to pry up and see if it's got some resistance there, which means it's down pretty well. Pick up my minute hand. Set that there for a second. Switch out the tip, which is a 0 0.7, 0 0.7 tip for the minute on this movement. Again, I think I show this in more detail in the older video. So I'll get this minute hand really started with, with the Rodico. Get it centered in the tube. Release it. Make sure my hands are lined exactly at 12. Again, I know you can't see this part exactly, but all I'm doing is pressing it onto the movement. I'm just checking to make sure that there is plenty of clearance with the hands. And there is plenty. Now I'll do the seconds hand, which doesn't matter as much where it is in relation to 12. For that, you just use the flat tip. Again, I love the tubes on these particular hands. It makes life so much easier. Now again, with the seconds hand, you gotta be careful. It's easy to get that tube in between the pin and the minute hand instead of actually on the pin. And so you just gotta make sure you do that correctly. Just cause I'm a stickler. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna move this to, to 12 just for fun. It's really about checking out height and make sure that the hands aren't interfering with each other. So I've got that at 12. I'm gonna push down on it. Okay. You don't need to push hard, just enough. Again, I'm just gonna test real quick and should pop up just a hair inside the movement. It does, just enough to let me know that that is attached just fine. All right, so that part's done. Now, just simply have to recase it. Make sure we give it a good dusting. Yeah, blowing on that, getting air makes the hairspring move underneath of the thing so you can see it turning. Ah, oh, watching a watch come to life. So now that's all sitting there nicely. Put this on here at three o'clock like so. Make sure that nestles down in there. I'm just gonna pick the whole thing up, flip it over. And then, there's lots of little different ways you can, well, tips and tricks, ways you can do this. So that's sitting in there. And then I'm gonna put the movement holder in, push that down, spin this around a little bit. It's a tight fit. I'm just looking for any dust or imperfections in here. Now right around the center hole, there, there are a couple imperfections on the dial, like really up close, but you can't really notice them much with the naked eye, just with magnification. That's fine. Nothing particularly irritating. I like this so much better. It looks so good. I, I do like it better than the than the silver. Again, I th think it looks like at least the numerals are black. 
Uh, but when you have this blue strap on them, it looks blue. Oh, it's so good. Okay, so let's tighten this back up all the way. Again, tightening it back up, just steady as you go. Don't overdo it. Make sure you've got your footing before you start putting a lot of pressure. And last thing you want is a big old gnarly case tool mark on the back of this exhibition case. Now I'm going to turn this just a little bit more, just a hair more, get that exactly at 12. I don't particularly care about things being aligned, but if I'm that close, you know, why not go just that little extra bit so it looks really nice. About right at center. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I move that back. I just want to test the alignment and make sure that the hour and minute hands look pretty in sync with each other. Looking pretty good. Vario, now White Empire. Uh, thanks, Ivan. Awesome. Well, as you can see, it's not that hard of a task. As always, though, you got to have the right tools. Just take your time, be patient with it, and it was a fun process. I'm so happy with the new look of the watch, as you saw in the earlier part of the video. It's it's just it's a little bit more me, and I cannot wait for the Empire 2. I've been consolidating my collection, but this is one I know I'm gonna have. And I just it's just great products coming from a great little micro brand in Singapore. Thank you, Ivan. Thank you, Vario. And I hope you've enjoyed this. I'm Brian. This is Watch Complications. Subscribe. Follow me on Instagram at watch underscore complications. Look at the website, watchcomplications.com. Out.